Hey everybody, welcome back to Harmon Homestead. We're in my dining room slash greenhouse slash brooder room today. You can see all the transplants growing behind me. And I wanted to tell you about our latest adventure with incubating. It's more like a catastrophe avoided, okay? So avoid this mess, all right? So listen to me. Have success where I'm having failure, okay? Um, but we avoided this failure. So I had some olive eggers and blue lace red wine dots, and I put them in on February the 13th at 7 p.m. So, this past weekend, it was time for lockdown on day 18. You increase the humidity in the incubator by adding water, and you leave the eggs alone so that they'll hatch. You won't turn them anymore. You just let it sit and lock it down, okay? Well, day 19, I looked and still no pip. I said, something's not right. Like th this, usually mine hatch early. I said, but it's the weather's been wacky. Maybe that's, you know, affecting this. And so I looked yesterday morning and I said, oh no, something is not right. My humidity has went down. You want the humidity to go up when you add water to your incubator. That way the chicks will burst out of the egg and hatch. And I looked and my humidity was 52%. I like to keep mine at 55 to 65 during lockdown. Otherwise, 45 to 55, the whole 18 days is perfect. My humidity was slipping when it should be rising at this point. I said, this, something's not right. I looked y'all and I had not added water to the incubator. I just quit turning the eggs. I, I don't know what I was thinking. We've got so much on our mind. So don't get distracted, okay? So this is what we did. now. I'm going to show you the incubator that I don't have on lockdown. I've just got eggs in and show you what we exactly did here. So I'm going to flip the camera around and show you, okay? So right here, this shows you your humidity, okay? So in this box, you can see tray number one right here. Let's see if it off so I can explain all this to you guys. In ours, now we have the Hope Abater Genesis. There's tray one, tray two, tray three, and tray four. That all depends on what you're incubating at the time. Normally, you always keep water in tray one, okay? And it's even numbered, number one. Well, when I put my chicks on lockdown, I just didn't add water to tray two. You're supposed to increase the humidity by adding water in here as well. So more water increases the humidity. So what I did, now I've done video after video on this. A turkey baster. If you have seedlings, this is an awesome way to water them, and this is how I put water in my incubator. Normally, I take all my eggs out, I take the little mat out right here, and then I fill it up with water, and then put my mat down, and then put my eggs back down. So what I did was I, I've got a bowl of water right here beside me, and this one needs a little bit more water. I took my turkey baster just like this, and piped the water down in. Okay, guys? just like that and it didn't hurt a thing but what I did was I went to tray number two because this one still had a little bit of water I added water to it I went to tray number two and quickly got the the lid back on the incubator the humidity rose and everybody hatched except one which is about normal for us so thankfully thankfully we were okay on that so you can go back if you forget to set your eggs on lockdown you can go back and add water if you have a syringe, a turkey baster, some kind of method to get down in there so you can get to that tray, okay? One, two, three, four. And all different birds have different humidity levels that they need for chickens. Tray one through day 19, or th excuse me, tray one through day 18 with water, keep your humidity 45 to 55%. Day 18, quit turning your eggs, fill up tray two. You want the humidity 55 to 65%. And hopefully that will help you. Here's some of our olive eggers. I'm gonna show you the final result. All right, so this is just the camera sitting on the lid of the incubator. I moved the camera over to the incubator where everybody hatched and that's what we've got guys. We've got chicks everywhere. Thankfully, it was a success. I think it's because we caught it early. I cannot stress enough to you that you have to check your incubators over and over and over. You have to. Someone just hatched right there. Say, I'm tired, mama. I'm tired. 
Yeah. And don't panic if you see your chicks lay down like that. Someone's just asleep right there. They like to sleep. They're tired. <laughs> Look at that one. Again, day one through 18, turn your eggs. If you don't have a turner, turn them by hand at least three times a day and keep your humidity 45 to 55%. Day 18, stop turning the eggs. Add water to your incubator to increase the humidity to keep it between 55 and 65. I want my chicks fully dry. I want them fluffy by the time I take them to the brooder plate and outside of the incubator. A chick, once it's hatched, can last 72 hours without having water. So by the time the first chick hatches, you've got 72 hours to get that this incubator complete and done with. That's how we do it. Someone else may have different methods, but it's worked for us so far and we've done really well. If you forget to add water during lockdown, open your lid really quickly and add water into the appropriate tray if no one has pipped at that point. Thankfully, all of our eggs were still just stalled. And that's why I knew, hey, something's not right. The more you do this, guys, the better you'll get at it and the better success rate you'll have because you'll know what you're doing. Practice makes perfect. All right, guys, wish these chicks good luck. This is the new babies. These are our Olive Eggers, Blue Lace Red Wine Dots. Last but not least, I want to do a quick little update on our tractor supply chicks. This video has taken off on the tractor supply chicks, so thank you all very much, and thank you to all the new subscribers. These little babies are doing great, okay? Everybody's there, everybody's good. Guys, I just changed the paper towel on the brooder plate like five minutes ago, okay? This, you're gonna have to keep changed, but it is so nice to have a clean brooder plate up under there. But everybody's happy and healthy. We've got some more up under our plate in there. <laughs> Bless it. But yeah, everybody's doing good. Now, I will tell you this. I got very concerned that these were not pullets. I said, oh, I'm worried, but look at those wings. Guys, the more you're around it, the more you can tell. Look at the wing shapes, long, that swoop. We've done videos on this. And I wouldn't mind one being a rooster, to be honest. Um, but I got worried the day I brought them home. And they're supposed to be several days old. But I'm telling you by looking at the wings, I've got a feeling that these were not that old. But it, who knows? I don't know. But they have really feathered in, feathered out. Something else, everybody looks at the wing feathers. Look at those little tail feathers starting. If you can see the little the little tail feathers, that's usually a good indication that you've got some hens. So for anybody going out right now and going to a store and buying chicks that say they're all pullets, they're gonna be females and lay you an egg, learn from the wing shapes. The majority of them will be accurate. I got very worried when I looked at these, but now I'm seeing them, I, yeah, they're, they're hens. So, study those wings that way you'll know next time you've, you've got something to look at and you'll know the difference when you see something that doesn't look like what you have now and you'll learn the difference okay look at those long swooping wings and little tail feathers starting these are just happy healthy i've been thoroughly pleased with this now i've got chicks right behind me that we're incubating we're hatching this was just like, hey, we're going to get out here with y'all, and we're going to do this, and we're going to see what happens. We, we want to see, too, how, how it works. I just wanted to join in on the fun. Yeah, I just wanted to join in on the fun. Happy and healthy. Guys, I think a lot of it's got to do with the brooder plate. I don't know. I love it. I'm a strong believer in a brooder plate. Look at them. They're active. They're jumping up here. They're jumping down. It's exercise, physical activity for these chicks. Shavings. They can get away from the heat if they want to, like these. They can get under the heat. They're just, they're curious, they're they're happy, they're healthy. They look good. Very, very pleased so far. All right, guys.